Welcome to the Wachendorf Projector Tool tutorial. Today we will learn how to read data from a file on the file system and also save it. For this tutorial I won't be doing very much actual programming because it's a little bit too much and uh, too complex. So I will indeed go through the existing example here and explain everything in detail. What do we have? Um, we have a simple project with one page, one frame and three variables, value 1, 2 and 3. These are the ones that you can see here. And there are two soft key buttons, load settings and save settings. The idea is to have a file such as this with three numerical values and this file shall be loaded when this soft key is pressed. I can also change the value of this, of these numbers and then I can save it back onto a file. The use case is for example um, you have a vehicle and you have several drivers and for each driver you can create something like a profile file with certain parameters and settings for that driver and the driver can load those settings he can manipulate his own parameter settings uh, values and he can save it back for the next day or the next week when he gets into the vehicle again. So I've explained you everything that's here now let's look at what's behind those buttons. First I'm gonna do the loading. I have the event on release here and you can already see the script load settings installed here. Let me enlarge this a little bit. Now, okay, let's just go through this line by line. <clears throat> In the first line, I, I do the actual file reading. You can see here, there's a um, hard-coded file path. This means that the file already has to exist on the file system when this project is started. Although maybe it doesn't, we will, we will talk about it later. Now, the content variable will become an array. Reading a file always returns an, ar an array with uh, a, a one-dimensional array with one array entry per line and the, li the lines, the single lines really look just like this. So if the file was like this, it would be an array with uh, two elements but I will use the simple case of only one element in the example. That's why I will here create a new variable line and it will be content zero. So this is only the content of the first line. This is now already a, st uh, a string. You can see it here because I will use the, the string function length, line.length, which returns the, the, the length, the number of characters in this line. Now, I have to deconstruct this string because I only want these numbers but I know that they have the semicolon right here. So what I do is I return, I will get the index, the first index of the, of the semicolon. Okay, and then I will just slice a part of this line string from the beginning, from zero to the point where the where the semicolon is. So value 1 is now only from 0 to here. It will not include the semicolon. So that's why now I can use the set variable value function and put the, the value the extracted value 1 into the into the peak line so that I can see it on the screen. Now I will remove no sorry now I will only cut uh, the rest of the of the string. I will only cut this part here and that's what happens in this line. I will slice, that's the, na the function name here, from the first semicolon plus one until almost the end. There is, a, there is an additional character at the end. That's why I'm using text length minus one here. Okay, 
And now the sound of this looks familiar. The end. I will look for the first semicolon. So let me demonstrate. I will I cut this out. Now I have this. Now I look for the first semicolon and I find it here. And I will use everything before that and um, put it into value 2. Then I'm writing it again in the P client. And now it is a bit more simple. I will just um, cut out this rest, slice from again first and plus one, and now I can only use text length. And value three then is the complete, really the complete uh, string from zero to text length. This is just really for safety. And then I put value three also in the P client and that's it for the loading. So of course the structure of the file has to be known, but it will always be because the file will not be created uh, manually by hand. It will it will only be created and loaded by the P client, by the by the JavaScripts. So let's look at the safe settings here. This is even easier. First, I'm loading the three values. Maybe the the user, the driver, has manipulated them with the encoder. Here I again have the file path. Maybe I could also do this as a, as a variable so that it is the same in all the scripts. But for this example it's okay. And now I will just uh, reconstruct this string right here. This is what I want in the file because this is what my load settings script file expects. So I'm putting in value 1 right here plus a semicolon right here, plus value two, semicolon, value three, and this is the special character at the end. It needs um, an end of line character. Otherwise, I, I won't be able to read the file. And then I will just um, call the write to file functions. It expects the file path. I have that right here. It has the, the content, which is the string, and it has the action replace. So whatever was in that file, it will be deleted and a new file will be created with only this string. And with this option, the file will also be created if it is not existent anymore. So it's not a problem if the, if the file doesn't exist yet on the first run. It's only a problem when you load the file, but uh, you can take measures there if you can uh, analyze the, 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 the string that you get and if it's empty, then of course there is no, no load settings, no settings file and that there is nothing to load.